Today I'm making a classic comfort dish, sweet and sour pork. Sweet and sour pork is widely known as a Chinese American classic, but did you know it actually has roots from Western China? That sweet and sour, or what we call soon team, is very Chinese. Hey team, I'm Jet Tila and welcome to Ready Jet Cook, where I teach you how to make my favorite Asian dishes from pantry to plate. But before we get started, please take a minute to subscribe to the Food Network YouTube channel. I remember eating this dish as a kid on the bus ride to Chinatown hanging out with my grandmother. So let's start picking out some ingredients while I tell you a little bit more about where these flavors originated. All right, so I'm gonna need some pineapple chunks, ketchup and Worcestershire sauce. This is one of those food anthropology moments where it all connects and it makes your head hurt because it's sweet and sour and there's multiple sweet and sour things like sugar and then I've got kind of the sweetness from the pineapple but then I've got sour from vinegar, just plain old vinegar and also I've got the acid from the Worcestershire sauce I'm gonna get all the basic ingredients done first. Yes, I'm gonna add a little food color. You can at me if you want. And if you don't wanna use it, don't worry about it. Worcestershire sauce is fermented tamarind, which is sour. But back in the day, the older formulation also had fish. Worcestershire sauce was a fermented fish sauce. Chinese ketchup was fermented fish sauce. And now we're calling this stuff ketchup. Anyway, I've either bored you or I've interested you to make this dish with me. So Chinese ketchup is supposedly the inspiration to like the modern ketchup. So instead of a fish sauce, now it's a tomato based sauce. So now it's time for pineapple. And no, I'm not copying out using canned pineapple. I think that it's got a really nice flavor. And I also need this pineapple because I need the juice as well. So I'm going to go ahead and separate the juice and the fruit. So I'm using pineapples in juice. If you end up using pineapples in syrup, that's fine too. Just back off the sugar in the sauce and you're good to go. I'm going to make a cornstarch slurry. So that just means a tablespoon of water and a tablespoon of cornstarch. And that slurry needs to be combined here in this bowl before it's added to the sauce. And then finally, the, the star of this flavor show is going to be a little bit of that canned pineapple juice. That's it. That is magic liquid. That is the elixir that's gonna be our sweet and sour pork sauce. So the sauce is done. Let me show you some really cool tricks when it comes to frying up the pork part. All right, so we need to spend a little bit of time on pork. I really wanna show you how most Chinese restaurants marinate pork, actually all their meats, to make them super tender. I think this step is super crucial uh, to getting that really nice mouthfeel because I want a crunchy nugget on the outside because of the batter, but I want a really tender bite of pork on the inside. And this is how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is cut my pork into one and a half inch cubes. And usually when you cube out meat, it's gonna leave it a little tough. So uh, the secret is marinating, also known as velveting. So you might see this kind of marination technique written out in recipes as velveting, but it's very simple. So obviously pieces of pork are not gonna be perfect one and a half inch cubes, but you know what, you're gonna approximate and as long as they're evenly cut, they're gonna cook evenly. So my tip is always, uh, cut it into strips of one and a half, and then those one and a half inch strips become one and a half inch cubes. Pork into a bowl, and the marination ingredients are very simple. So remember, baking soda is the tenderizer, okay? Cornstarch helps pull the marination into the pork. Salt is for flavor. That's it. And I wanna use a little bit of water just to kind of break down and move all of those flowers together. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Baking soda actually gets into the muscle fibers and almost pushes it apart, right? And make it really tender. I'm gonna put this to the side, wash hands and come back and fry it up. Okay, so I need to give you a definitive recipe for what we call tempura flour. A lot of you have cooked with me before and I'm calling for tempura flour anywhere I'm frying something to make a crispy batter. All right, this is gonna be the dredge and the batter mix for anything you need crispy. It's very simple. AP flour, 
cornstarch, and baking soda. Yes, that's it. I'm whisking this together to aerate it. You can actually run it through a sieve if you want, but we've made frying flour. Magic tempura flour does everything. I'm gonna add a little bit to the pork, and I'm gonna actually start by the dredging of it. And all that means is I'm covering all the surface area uh, of the pork with this flour. And now by adding a bit of water, I'm making the batter simultaneously. And it's not a heavy batter, so you don't need to go big with the water. But I'm kind of adding water to try to get something that's kind of close to a thin crepe batter. There it goes. You can kind of start to see it getting really silky and super smooth, almost like a slurry. There it is. So I'm gonna show you what I'm looking for here. So each piece is uh, coated. It's got a really nice thick covering of this frying flour batter. All right, so I'm gonna fry right around 350 to 360, knowing I'm gonna lose a little temp. And make sure to throw them in one by one. The batter is gonna make the pork kind of stick together. So make sure you're pulling them apart before you get them into the oil. And once they're in, you wanna make sure they don't stick together. So I'm just getting in and making sure they stay apart. And you're always gonna wanna drain on a rack. The rack is gonna keep the pork suspended. It's gonna make sure it doesn't get oil logged and sog out. And I've also started an oven on low at about 200 degrees to keep the pork as I'm gonna be cutting my vegetables before I actually get it into that final pan. What I'm listening for is a constant searing or frying sound. I'm looking for the bubbles to be small, tight, and consistent. If you start to see the bubbles slow down a little bit, that means the oil's getting too cold. So just wait. It says this is a large seven to eight quart pot. If you don't have one this big, just do this in two or three batches to make sure you're keeping that oil nice and hot. So all I'm really looking for is GBD, golden brown and delicious. Because if my oil is consistent at 350 or 360, the pork's gonna be cooked through on the inside when the outside is nice and golden brown. All right, so some of our first pieces are done and I'm really just going by color. I know that these guys have been in there probably six minutes. With such a small cube, they're definitely cooked through. All righty, make sure they are spaced out. You don't want to crowd them because you don't want to create steam and lose that crunchiness. So they are done. It's time to grab our veggies and our pan and finish this sweet and sour. Because it's not like a hardcore stir fry, I don't need 10,000 BTUs here. I'm just gonna put this pan over medium as I'm cutting my vegetables and tossing as I go. So the first thing I'm gonna need is garlic. Put the backs, smash them flat. And I'm just gonna give them a nice little mince. I'm gonna add just a little bit of that neutral oil. Grapeseed, avocado, get as fancy as you want. Next, half an onion. Top, tail. Uh, large dice. Once that's peeled, so come in three quarter inch towards the root, three quarter inch dices, perfect. Now, bell peppers, top, tail, seed pot out. I'm gonna cut these into dice all together. Just remember, tile becomes a slice, slice becomes a dice. Tile, dice. I'm using scallions like veggies here, meaning I want them larger. So just a biased one inch. I'm not using them for garnish. So by the time I've got my scallions in, the bell peppers and the onions are perfect. I'm gonna add pineapple. And like the orange chicken you've made with me, I'm making the sauce into a slurry first because I want the sauce thick before the pork hits it to keep that pork nugget super crispy. This is where you crank your heat to the max and you wanna to continue to stir to make sure to activate that cornstarch slurry. And that slurry needs to be about 180 degrees, right under boiling point to activate. And you're not gonna add the pork until you have a really nice thick slurry. And that's how you get that lovely kind of like um, candy-like coating and the pork still stays crispy. So as you can see around the edges, I'm starting to get 
200 degree simmering. The smell is incredible. That vinegar, that sugar, all of these vegetables. I'm looking for that, what we call in French, nappe, meaning I'm gonna run the wood spoon through the sauce. I'm gonna run a channel. And if that channel doesn't run across the spoon, that's the consistency. That's that perfect coating and not sogging consistency. All right, so I have even bubbles across the top. I'm gonna grab the pork out of the oven and put it right into the pan. So the slurry is activated. It's time to get that pork coverage. So now, if you're comfortable, you toss it together. So the pork vegetables and pineapple are perfectly coated. It is time to plate. So I always serve sweet and sour with some kind of starch. Uh, because of all that acid and sugar, they're delicious. But just a little bit of rice or noodles to mellow it out really is that perfect accompaniment. Here we go. A little pork, a little pineapple, a little prayer that I don't burn my mouth, uh, and this is it. Mm. Just that dance, that balance between acid and sweet and salty and umami is so perfect. Sweet and sour pork never disappoints. You can see why it's been such a classic for a long time. Well, I've made mine. It's time for you to make yours, and I can't wait to see how it comes out. I hope you enjoyed cooking with me today. Do not forget to subscribe to Food Network's YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Jet, 